Hey everybody, Erin James here. I have been playing around with my King Bee wheel because I wanted, I had one bobbin and we called it the problem child bobbin that it was just like kind of clicky and I don't know, it just kind of made noise and it seemed kind of just like it didn't fit good, like kind of it just wasn't making a good connection. And a friend of mine who just got an Echo and loves it had one bobbin, like her other two were good, and then she had one bobbin that she called the problem child bobbin too, that was just, hers made much more of like a squealy sound. So I'm making this video primarily for her because I was like, I want to try to fix this. So um, I am stubborn and cheap, which usually works to my advantage because I don't want to have to buy replacement parts for things. Or, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna fix it. So anyhow, this was totally just born out of me uh, being stubborn and uh, cheap and wanting to fix things. So I have just sat down with some simple tools around my house and I've messed with this bobbin and I think I've got a pretty good solution. It might not be like the, you know, completely silent, but you know, definitely way quieter and much more better fit not a good sentence, <laughs> much better fitting than it was previously. So here you go. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear it, but this is what I've referred to as my problem bobbin. It makes kind of a click, 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 click noise. And it kind of comes and goes. It kind of comes and goes. It honestly doesn't bother me that much because I'm normally watching TV when I'm spinning, so I just, you know, I don't know. I don't think about it too much. But anyhow, since I'm a dealer, I've had other people with kind of like weird bobbin noise issues. And so I was talking to Ashley, who is our like hero of all things Spinolution at the company. And she said that that's usually from, and here I'll show you, from the... Uh, the bobbin, not, I mean, they're all, you can see like on this one, uh, I'm trying to get the camera to cooperate. It never wants to. That just basically, this is the magnet in here and stupid camera, the magnet in here and then there's a uh, magnet in here and you, well, first off, you want to make sure that this magnet is actually still attached here. Sometimes if the glue on the magnet here gets to where it's not uh, as strong and then the pull to the bobbin will actually become stronger than the pull to this or the glue that, uh, you know, it'll actually, you'll find the magnet will be like hiding <laughs> here. Like you'll pull it off and you'll be like, where's my magnet? And the magnet will be hiding in your bobbin. So if that's the case, uh, and that also will cause the bobbin to like, obviously when it's spinning, like it's kind of not doing right. So that would be the first thing you want to check is make sure that your magnet is still where it's supposed to be and that it's still tight and it is. But if not, if it is hiding in here, you would take like your finger or butter knife or, you know, whatever, and kind of easily pop it out. And then you just put a little bit of super glue, like Gorilla Glue's my preferred glue on the back and just, you know, put it back on there. And that's a super easy, super common fix. So anyhow, first step, make sure your magnet's still where it's supposed to be. And this is a total experiment. What I'm doing here is so since Ashley said that the bobbin not, you know, being kind of a problem bobbin is probably because it's not making as good of a connection on there as the good ones, I'm going to look at these and try to figure out like maybe one of them's got like a hole's not the right size or maybe some of these little grooves aren't the right thing. So that's what I'm going to be doing and it's going to be a big experiment and I will get back to you. Okay. So also just a couple disclaimers and I'll let y'all watch my new quieter bobbin while I'm doing this. Um, this is obviously just me messing around. This is my wheel. I did mention I'm a dealer, but none of this uh, information is remotely <laughs> backed by or guaranteed by Spinolution. So if you start uh, messing around with your wheel or your bobbin and it totally falls apart on you, like please don't be mad at Spinolution because uh, it was my dumb idea, not theirs. So this was just, this is my personal wheel and my personal bobbin, and I had a friend who was asking me about something because she had kind of a clicky bobbin. So uh, please do not, you know, this is definitely a mess with it at your own risk procedure, but, um, you know, so just please know that. And the other thing is, this is a bunch of wood and magnets and metal, and it's a really sophisticated piece of machinery for sure, but... Um, you know, it's not going to be totally perfect. Every part isn't going to be exactly the same. And that's not, you know, it does make me mad 
when I'll, I'll see people like complaining about something, you know, this brand wheel or others, and they're like, oh, it's just not quite right. Well, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's a spinning wheel, guys. Like, super old school. I mean, I'm sure if you go get like a really old school, get like a great wheel, I'm sure that thing has all sorts of like bumps and hiccups and, you know, weirdness involved. <laughs> So, you know, definitely keep that in mind. It's not going to be just absolutely silent. Every bobbin's not going to be absolutely the same. So, uh, but, you know, if you do have something, I totally, like, I get it. Repetitive noises make me want to punch myself in the face. So, um, you know, I get it. So I'm much happier with this, and I'm going to shut up here in just a second. See, it's really quiet. Really quiet now. This is the same bobbin. You can see it's got the same purple thread on it. Another thing to keep in mind is sometimes I feel like when I have less or more yarn on here, or if it's like more on this side or more on that side, or you know, whatever, like it's gonna, it's spinning, it's balanced. So, I mean, if it gets kind of out of balance, then you know, you might hear more or less of a sound. So, also keep that in mind. I would suggest moving pegs pretty often to keep your yarn pretty uniform, and I think that'll also help cut down on the noise. And, um, you know, so make sure you're using moving your yarn steadily that way. And another thing I'd noticed with what I'd been using and why it hadn't really been bothering me was I would uh, put singles on my other two bobbins that I felt like were quieter. And then when I two-plied, I would use this bobbin, the louder bobbin, and I felt like it made less noise going the other way than this way. And that might totally be my imagination, but something to play around with. And that way it wasn't really bugging me because that was just always like my two-ply bobbin. So, uh, you know, that way it was going the other way and it was still totally usable and fine and, you know, whatever. So anyway, here's the tips. Okay, so what I did to get this bobbin to be more quiet was I was studying it, like I said, uh, studying it, and it just looked like if there's any sort of debris, like, you know, leftover glue or like a little piece of wood or whatever blocking, even if it doesn't look like that big of a deal, blocking the metal part on here, the metal ring, it's not going to make as solid of a connection. So uh, same thing with these little, uh, like, ridges here. If I was looking at some of my other bobbins and I felt like some of the ridges in the, the good bobbins were a little bit deeper, so I felt like that was letting, this is just totally me messing around, I felt like that was letting the washer get down in there further, which was going to let that magnet and the metal piece have a better connection. So that's what I was trying to do, is come up with a way to have a better connection between the magnet on the flyer and this metal ring. So what I did was, first thing I did is I just used a, uh, this is Purple Power, I think, just like a degreaser, any sort of like household degreaser cleaner. I just put some on a paper towel and, you know, I, I wiped down in there really good to make sure that there wasn't like some sort of weird little piece of glue and, you know, just cleaned it out and then, you know, blew you know, any sort of little wood debris out and, you know, really just cleaned it very thoroughly. You could get a Q-tip after it, but this is just a regular old kitchen household degreaser. So nothing too hard. And then what I did was I took one of my favorite fix everything tools, a uh, small flathead screwdriver. <laughs> and all I did was I just very gently, gently is the key word here, just went around this metal part, the metal ring, and just kind of, once again, was just, even if it was something I couldn't really see, tried to get any sort of glue or funny little wood piece or whatever off of there. And I would kind of go in with the screwdriver and then go in with the degreaser. And then you could also take this kind of more side, like this was going more that way to get the metal part. I also held it straight, if you all, there you go, now you can actually see, straight and kind of did twist it the same way, but where I was maybe making this, you know, just really gently scraping the wood ring here just to make sure it was, you know, uniform and just there wasn't like a weird snaggy part or, you know, anything in there. And I would just alternate between kind of cleaning it up with the flathead screwdriver and then wiping it out and blowing on it. And like I said, you don't want to like really get in there and gouge at it like all at once, especially if it's a little, you know, the wood's a little damper from the degreaser. Like really, you don't want to like chisel at it. But I just would gently go back and forth between the two things until I felt like that was a little bit of a cleaner circle. 
And the other thing I did was, like I said, I compared my other bobbins to this one, and I felt like the, this is one of the good ones, I felt like the ridges here were a little bit sharper and cleaner on this one than they were on this one. So what I did that same thing with the screwdriver was I just kind of went through and, you know, just really gently, and you can tell I did sculpture class and art class, so, you know, I felt like pretty comfortable, you know, messing with it went through and just kind of cleaned up, like I said, any sort of little funny spot. And just, you want to just go slow and gentle and alternate between, you know, blowing on it. And then, you know, just the idea I was going for was just making these ridges a little bit more cleaned up and sharp. And then the next thing that, like I said, I was sort of a tip from the people that actually know what they're talking about was that you want to make a good connection on here. And obviously, since, you know, this is a piece of wood and not, you know, some sort of computer generated steel or anything that's going to be exact, some of these little ridges might fit better than others. So when you're putting it on here, what you want to hear is a good loud snap. Like, see how that sounds just kind of like thud, thud. You want to hear a good, so I would even kind of go through, and if it doesn't, like, that doesn't feel good, but really put your thumb back here, and I mean, don't hurt your wheel, you know, secure it, but you kind of, see how I'm rotating? Oh, there it went. So you got the good click. So make sure you're kind of, here, I'll do it again, you know, put it on there, and you're like, no, no, no. And then you get that good click. And, you know, like I said, be careful with your wheel. Make sure you're putting your hand, other hand back here. But really, I mean, come on, ladies. Y'all have probably worn enough high heels that you know how it goes. You kind of have to break it in. And, you know, they start out stiff, and then you got to, you know, break them in a little bit. That's kind of the same idea I was going for with this. But you want to hear that really good click. And that means that you've gotten a good connection between the magnet and that. And then uh, put this on there. Now and that back and see much quieter much quieter and also I mean this is a king bee so I mean the treadle is a little different on this but you don't I know I can get really bad about letting my feet get away from me and I just start treadling faster and faster and faster you may just be treadling for that particular bobbin at a speed that's just not you know he said I know I'm also very personally very guilty of like treadling too fast or not even so like so this is a king bee which has got kind of a different treadle anyway but if I'm making sure I'm doing nice even treadling it's super quiet now so anyhow I hope that helps and I will talk to you later